You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob, and this is episode number 850. Pretty cool. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you for sending in your questions. Thank you for listening. It is absolutely a pleasure that you are willing to do so. Agreed. Agreed 100%. This show is going to be kind of quick today. We're going to be talking about flying over people who is defined as participants in the operation. That and so much more from our question asker today brought to you by the Drone EU community. If you're not willing to learn more in life, how can you ensure success? Ensure success with a community of lifelong learners who are passionate, motivated, and inspired to help one another get questions answered and grow their drone business. If that sounds like you, then you need to join the DroneU community. Just go to DroneU.education. Hey, this is Rick in Anchorage, Alaska. I was just listening to your program about the FAA rules about flying over people. If I heard you correctly, the FAA rules say you can't fly over anyone that's not participating. So if I'm shooting a wedding or a backyard party and everybody says, okay, I don't have any problem with you flying over me, is that okay as far as the law is concerned when it says you can't fly over anyone who is not involved or is not participating? So are the people in the wedding party and are people in my backyard barbecue participating? Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the question. We really appreciate it, Rick. Hope you... uh yeah. Sorry. We're going to see if we can get you an answer here. <laughs> well, um, it's the end of the day. We're not it, used to doing these in the afternoon. No, we're not. Um, I, I, I could look this up in the summary of Part 107 released by the FAA. That's like the 634-page document that goes over Part 107 regulations and the explanations therein. But I'm not going to waste our time because I've read this enough to know. When they're talking about participants directly related to your operation, that means you and the VO. So if you are flying and there's another guy flying and he has a VO, that covers you guys. It does not cover anyone outside of direct operations or direct involvement in the operation itself. The FAA even further defines uh, this uh, working on movie set. They're like, even if it's a movie crew, oh, it looks like you even have it open. Mm -hmm. It looks like if you're a movie crew or anything like that, that just does not count either. You're not a participant in, in, in operating the drone. So they made it really clear. Since you have it up, Rob, why don't you go ahead and read it well, for us? Well, first of all, participating, the if I do a search, it shows up 56 times in the document. So, so they're it's all very the clear about who's participating. They are very clear. And I'm glad you used the word direct because that particular word is used in association with participating in the entire document, directly participating, which is why you used it. And by the way, this also pertains to... Anybody who so-called gives you permission to fly over them, that doesn't mean that it you can according to 107. Correct. That's really important yes. just because you get – I mean, you could have them sign something. That's all fine and dandy, but according to 107, that doesn't make it okay, correct? That is correct. The only person that you're flying over is yourself to get some air conditioning in the summer heat like <laughs> I just did about 20 minutes ago. That's right. That's right. So, yeah, it's important that that be clear. It does seem as though that's something that may change, right? In, yes. In terms of the 107 and things that are coming down the pike, regarding change, it sounds as though that might be one of the first things, um, relatively. It may be, but we'll talk about that in another show. I actually have the new um, Senate proposal. Kenji just sent it to me. Um, and there's actually a micro UAS clause in there, which could just completely change everything. So, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. And, you know, it's all kind of funny because the reality is it falls out of the air. It's not necessarily going to fall straight down. So the whole thing is kind of quirky to begin with. But nonetheless, it is what it is for now. Yep. Okay, here we go. Hold on. I found the micro rule. I should probably do this on another podcast, but this podcast is really short. So in general... The new proposed micro unmanned aircraft system operational rules. Notwithstanding the rulemaking required by Section 332 of the FAA Modernization and Reform Act of 2012, the administrator shall issue regulations no later than 270 days after the enactment of the Federal Aviation Reauthorization Act of 2017, under which any person may operate a micro unmanned system classification of unmanned aircraft systems. 
the aircraft component of which weighs 4.4 pounds or less, including the payload, without the person operating the system being required to pass an airman certification requirement, including any requirements under Section 44703 of this title under Part 61 of Title 14 of the CFR or any other rule of regulation relating to airman certificates. The operational rules under micro unmanned aircraft systems. The rulemaking required by Paragraph 1 relating to micro unmanned aircraft systems shall consider the following rules under any appropriate modifications thereof concerning altitude, airspeed, geographic location, and time of day as the administrator considers appropriate for operations of these systems. An operation at an altitude of 400 feet above ground level or less, operation with an airspeed no greater than 40 knots, operation within visual line of sight of the operation, operation during the hours between sunrise and sunset, operation no less than five statute miles from a geographic center of an airport with an operational air traffic control tower, that's key, or an airport denoted as an current aeronautical chart published by the FAA, except that a micro unmanned aircraft system may be operated within five statute miles of such an airport if the operator of a system provides notice to the airport operator and in the case of an airport with an operational air traffic control tower receives approval from the air traffic control tower. Did you hear that right? So they're saying so as proposed in this new Senate law, you may not need a part 107 license if all you're flying is drones smaller than a phantom. Hmm. Think about that. That could really help, you know, this this industry. So what do you think about that? You like it, obviously, if that, based on that statement. Based I think on it would statement. really clarify things, to be honest, because, I mean, the FAA has done nothing but confuse people. True. With hobbyists versus commercial. And at the end of the day, I'm not sure that's really what they care about. There would be, I'm, and for the record, I'm generally a, a less government is better person. M- libertarian, you mean? Yeah, me too. Yeah, that's fair. But. If those people don't have to want have a 107, what is dictating the rules by which they fly? Would there be anything, or is it not talking Awkward about that? Silence. <laughs> I don't Interesting. know. Interesting. I don't know. Other than this, if because, this rule becomes a rule, then it would be this. Okay, so it would clarify some of those points that are important, like how but, high you can fly, etc. Yeah, but what I like about it is it's no lo- that would like no longer be you know hobbyist versus commercial. It would be no one needs. A certificate, everyone has to say five miles from an airport. And the only way that you don't do that is by contacting ATC. I think that's pretty simple. It's kind of full circle. I kind of like it. But cool. I haven't thought about it too much. So Yeah, that was the first anyway. I've heard that. So Yeah. We'll, have to it, think. well it wasn't you the first time we talked about it at the lunch panel at the drone you fly in. I know we did, but I was kinda of in and out for very We had reasons. the writer of said bill talking about it. We did, which is really great. That is really yep. great. So Just that's like, a draft, or is, or is that actually what's been presented to it's, pass? It's what's been presented. Um, it still currently could go through. I guess the House passed it, and the Senate is now going through and making their notations. Okay, so subject to amendments, mm-hmm. something yep. along those lines, potentially. Totally. Very interesting. Well, on that but bomb- that, By the way, I'm sorry, <laughs> on that bombshell, it didn't do anything about flying over people. Did, did it talk about flying over? People? I didn't see anything. So there wasn't really anything there. That's about awkward. that. That's yeah. <laughs> so on that on that bombshell. That'll do it for us today. Uh, my name is Paul, and I'm Rob. This is a tired episode of Ask Drone You. Thanks, <laughs> thanks for listening. Oh.